everyone, I'm Carrie Pena, and thank you so much for checking in with us on our Sunday Spotlight. I am here in studio with Jason Rose, and we have some really cool things going on in the theater world here in Phoenix. I have to say, first off, congratulations. Uh, you are the producer and conceiver of Americano. And tell us how it all came to be. Well, it's kind of a weird story from a guy who can't sing or dance, but I met the artistic director at the Phoenix Theater Company at a wedding in April of 15, and I said to him, I've got an idea after he started explaining how things come to his stage, and it was like telling a comedian he had a joke for him. It was right. like, <laughs> I've heard it a million times, and I think he was surprised when I followed up with him. And a couple months later, I came in with a treatment, uh, more than an outline, and uh, presented the initial idea for Americano to him. Americano is all about a, a dreamer. It is, but that's not how we started. We started with a fictitious story of an undocumented immigrant intersecting with Roger Klein. And a lot of people may know Roger Klein and his great music here. Yeah. And it was kind of an almost famous story. From so the Peacemakers? From the Peacemakers. Yeah. And we spent a year and a half doing that. And it was a B minus. And our team, though, became very passionate about doing an immigration musical. And so we said, let's not give up on it. Let's pivot to the story of a dreamer. And we were blessed to find a needle in the haystack and ask a young man named Antonio Valdivinos to come in and meet with Michael Bernard, the artistic director at the Phoenix in me. And we knew in the first five minutes, this was it. The story of a, of a young, uh, Phoenix high school kid inspired by 9-11 to serve in the Marines. And his parents never told him he was undocumented and un unable to serve. And he learned that the hard way, but that's not where his journey ended. It's where he went on to serve the only country he ever knew in other very powerful ways, including electing a Marine to the United States Congress. Now you are a very well-known uh, political strategist and consultant. You were not fearful at all at this becoming a political play or musical. You, you mean really, it's very heart-centric. I loved it. Yes, there's certainly, uh, I, I, I describe it as a purple message, not a red or a blue message. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, a, it's a true story of hope and patriotism and resilience, and love too. Yeah. And you laugh at this show, you cry at this show, but I think you feel even better about the future of the country and some of the tough challenges that we face after you listen to the incredible music and witness this this amazing true story. So, as you said, I mean, you're 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 not uh, a theater geek. Uh, you know, you you haven't been on stage yourself. But for you, when you were seeing this, your concept come to life, did you ever have that moment like, whoa, I'm way over my skis here, what have I done? Or were you just excited about seeing it, it build and what could become? Both. It's kind of like being in a double black run um, in a snowstorm. I stay storm. away from those. <laughs> so but yeah, being out over your skis. <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's been an amazing team and a series of sliding doors and our composers from Austin, Texas, our arrangers from Nogales, the border town, um, you know, we have a co-author from San Diego. There's certainly a local element here. And how this Motley crew came together to produce this work is crazy. And I'm glad to be talking about it yes. because I'm so appreciative to this team that has been great. And everyone has had a passion for it. And everyone's excited about trying to do something that's never been done before. And that's put an original work created right here up on stage in New York. Well, let's talk about that because there's a huge opportunity coming up. You you have been um, putting out social media that is way bigger than a, a musical here in Phoenix, and that is this production is very well going to be Broadway bound. Well, it's an inexact science to get there, but we have taken uh, some unorthodox steps. We have billboards in Times Square. What Phoenix production has the audacity uh, to do that. We're doing what's called a 29-hour read on April 17th in New York for Broadway leadership for those who weren't able to see it here. Because from here on out, we know we have a special piece of art. We see how the audiences are reacting. But there are several families that control the theaters in New York, both on and off Broadway. And it's our charge to try to get them convinced that Americano is the next big thing, mm. that they should give it a shot. Yeah. And so we're taking all of the steps to, to try and do that and, and get Phoenix exporting this special work 
2,500 miles to the east. You've been such a huge advocate of so, so many things in Phoenix. You're big in the philanthropy world and you give a lot, you and your wife give so much of your time. How does it make you feel to now be able to advocate in the theater world and give Phoenix this kind of high level platform? It is exciting. I got to tell you, though, speaking of being out over your skis, I never expected it to be as expensive as it has been. <laughs> yeah. um, to promote it? But yes, to mm -hmm. produce it. And it's a joint venture with the Phoenix Theater, their company. There are partners in it, but you know, I have certain obligations uh, and they have certain obligations. But you know, yesterday I was at a, a sold out show and there was a, a woman that we both know um, and she came up to me after the show and she was crying. And I was not expecting that. And this was five or 10 minutes after the show. And she said, I'm going to call my state representative because I was so moved by what I saw mm. that I want to support the change that was part of the story. Um, and so, that, you know, no matter how big the checks are, getting that kind of reaction yeah. It's pretty cool and pretty rewarding. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about the audience reaction because I had the opportunity to go to the dress rehearsal, I believe it was the night before opening night. How much anxiety did you feel? I mean, that's your baby and you never know how it's going to be received. You don't, but I had, I have, there's been 67 scripts. There's been multiple dress rehearsals, I'd call them table reads. That's mm -hmm. what they're called in the business as I've come come to learn. And so I I knew, I'd liken it to, I've, I've, I've not never given birth, but the doctor tells, um, tells women if the baby is healthy or not. Yeah. And I could tell from the doctor, the audiences who had seen it, that we had a healthy piece of art. Yeah. And the music Get it? You can't have a great musical without great music is just special. The music is finding its own popularity, right? We released a concept album, which again was a very unusual thing to do a week before the show. One of them, you know, it's it's rare that, that uh, a new musical will ever do that. Waitress, which has been on Broadway for a long period of time, did that. Um, and we decided to take a chance on it. But Carrie Rodriguez, a, a critically acclaimed art, artist in Austin, had such a passion for this work. It mm -hmm. really spoke to her. And candidly, I was not in love with her music when we started this <laughs> journey. It was kind of slower and ballad and folklorico mm -hmm. and kind of just, I, I wasn't seeing it. But usually when someone has passion for something, good things result. Absolutely. And the lyrics and the poetry that she created and beautiful slower songs and amazing faster upbeat songs, it's just a book of work that I think will stand for all time. What has this process taught you about yourself? I mean, you're, you're a businessman in the business world. What has this taught you? What's interesting from a business standpoint, um, I was able to find some success by being a pretty hard charging dude. Mm -hmm. And that was not necessarily the approach as producer because you have a team of creatives, um, you have egos, you have things that you've never been exposed to in life. And I think after the first go around, that first year and a half where we didn't succeed, I took a step back and just listened a lot more. Yeah. And deferred a lot more. And let the great team that we've assembled do what they do. Mm. And it's not to say that I wouldn't step in when I disagreed with something mm -hmm. and then we'd all talk about it. Yeah. Um, but we have a great locker room. Mm -hmm. We have a great collaborative effort. And so I think it has been a fundamentally different approach to business and creating than that I would have anticipated. Make no mistake, I'm hard charging and yeah. the end result and that is trying to put a really cool production on the biggest stage in the world. Yeah. But it's been a, a very important lesson in life too to go through this process. And when you have been in the room and seen uh, people cheer and see your actors who really leave it all out on the stage, I mean, just emotionally, what has that done for you? Well, I would say uh, it was about a week before you saw the dress rehearsal. And we were in the rehearsal hall at the Phoenix Theater Company. And I was, I was, I think I had the flu and I was, I said, I got to suck it up um, and, and go see this rehearsal. And I did, and a creative consultant um, who was sitting next to me that I'd hired a couple years before, we were about halfway through the first act. 
and I can't use certain words here, but <laughs> I, I essentially leaned over to her and I go, this is just unfreaking believable. Yeah. I can't believe we got here. Yeah. And she said, we did it. And that was so amazing. And sure, you have doubts along the way. But this is art at its best. This is one of the best things that this city has ever produced. And I have, I don't mean to sound arrogant about that. You're this has been a very of, yeah. humbling experience. But now seeing the amount of people that have come to the show and the reaction that they've had is, um, is really special. And just in closing, I mean, what, what is your um, advice for people who, because this can be serve as inspiration to anyone who maybe has a creative idea. I mean, you stuck in there, like you said, it, it wasn't easy along the way. There were some times when you might, might have thought, is this thing ever going to happen? What is your advice to people about staying the course if you really feel passionate and you love something? You know, I think everyone at some point in their life is attracted to the idea of show business. They've got a great idea for a TV show or a movie or a book and they, they don't see it through. Um, they think there's a silver bullet. They come up with an idea and someone's going to walk off the street in Los Angeles and say, hey, I'm going to take your idea and give you a bunch of money. Yeah. It's not the way it works. And you just have to gut it out and push through it and assemble a great team. Um, and money at the end of the day is important to have a team that's resourceful. But what I've learned in this experience is no one's doing it for the money on the creative side. They all believe passionately in the work and that, and, and for the aspiring creative, the aspiring entrepreneur, it's just stick with it. Yeah, stick I love it. that. Jason Rose, thank you so much. And uh, I'm, I'm so excited to see what becomes at that 29 hour read. It's a very specific time commitment. Union rules. Yeah. So where can people find out more information and, and download the music? So it's a, on 300 streaming platforms across the world. It's Americano, the musical by Carrie Rodriguez and Sergio Mendoza. And we promise you won't be disappointed by what you hear. Congratulations Thank to you. you and to all of the team, because as you said, it was a huge team effort. Thank you. I loved it. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. You can see all of our content at InspiredMedia360TV.com. Take care.